Hi everyone. In today's video, we're going to be solving AQA, GCC Chemistry, Higher Tier, Paper 2. Today we're solving June 2022 paper. And this one is the part 2 of the question paper where we're going to be solving from question number 6 to question number 10. This question is about the chemistry of the Earth's atmosphere. Figure 3 shows how the percentages of gases in the Earth's atmosphere may have changed since the atmosphere was formed. So we can see the percentages of gases on the Earth's atmosphere represented in the y-axis and the million of millions of years that has passed until today. Explain the change in percentage of the gas in the region labeled A on figure 3. In region label A, we can see that the concentration of nitrogen is increasing. The percentage of nitrogen is increasing in the part labeled A. Because of intense volcanic activity, nitrogen is released into the atmosphere. Explain the change in percentage of gas in the region labeled B on figure 3. So in the label B, we can see that the percentage of carbon dioxide is decreasing. Because carbon dioxide dissolved in the ocean water and it formed carbonates and sediments. Compare the changes in the percentages of gases in the region labeled C. The percentage of carbon dioxide decreased and the percentage of oxygen increased. This means that the increase and decrease in percentage of carbon dioxide and oxygen occur at the same day and at similar rate. What process caused the changes in the percentage of gases in the region labeled C on figure 3? So photosynthesis is mainly responsible for decreasing the CO2 concentration when oxygen concentration increases. Remember, when the graph will show that there is an increase in oxygen concentration, then only you can mention about photosynthesis. Because you see, in the beginning, there was a decrease in CO2 concentration. However, we did not mention photosynthesis because photosynthesis, photosynthetic organism evolved at this particular point. We can see on the diagram it evolved at this particular point. So if we say that because carbon dioxide is in photosynthesis at P, this will be completely wrong. So in the exam, please make sure that you see that the oxygen concentration is increasing, which you know shows that carbon dioxide is used in photosynthesis. Natural gas is a fossil fuel. Describe how deposits of natural gas are formed. So when plankton dies and the organisms were covered by sediments, they are subjected to high temperature and pressure over millions of years. And this converts them into fossil fuel, such as natural gas. Ammonia is produced in the Haber process. The raw material for the Haber process are nitrogen and hydrogen. The equation for the reaction is nitrogen gas reacts with hydrogen in a reversible reaction to produce ammonia. Give the sources of nitrogen and the hydrogen used in the Haber process. Now for the nitrogen, we know that it is extracted from air and for the hydrogen, it is extracted from natural gas. How does the equation for the reaction show that the atom economy of the forward reaction is 100%? The equation shows that there is only one product. Figure 4 represents the Haber process. Nitrogen and hydrogen are put into a reactor. Nitrogen and hydrogen and ammonia is found in the mixture once the product is produced. The ammonia is collected and the unreacted and nitrogen and hydrogen is put back into the reactor so that the process can continue again. Explain how the ammonia produced is separated from the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen in X. So the mixture is cooled at low temperature. Only ammonia is able to liquefy and nitrogen and hydrogen has a very low boiling point so they remain as gas. The Haber process uses temperature of 450 degrees Celsius and pressure of 200 atmospheric pressure. Table 6 shows the percentage yield of ammonia produced at 450 degrees Celsius using different pressures. So the pressure in atmosphere used is between 60 to 420 and the percentage yield of ammonia is from 9 to 43 percent. We can see a general increase in pressure is associated with an increase in yield. Update figure 5. The first two parts have been plotted, so we have to use a suitable uh, scale for the x-axis and plot the remaining table 6. Determine the percentage yield of ammonia at 450 and 500 atmospheric pressure. To determine this, we are going to extend, extend the existing graph that we have up until 500 degrees Celsius. So this gives us an approximate yield of 
48%. The question says that we have to show our working. So first of all, we extended the line and then we're going to extrapolate. The equation for the production of ammonia in the harbor process is nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to produce ammonia. The forward reaction is exothermic. Whenever the forward reaction is exothermic, the backward reaction will be endothermic. The condition used the temperature of 450 degrees Celsius to 100 atm and the presence of iron as a catalyst. Explain why these conditions are chosen for economical production of ammonia in the harbor process. We should include references to rate of reaction and the position of the equilibrium. Higher temperature gives higher rate of reaction because more number of frequent collisions per second. Higher temperature gives higher rate of reaction because more number of particles have energy greater than the activation energy. And higher pressure gives a higher rate because more frequent frequent collisions because the particles are closer together and the use of catalyst gives a higher rate of reaction because the activation energy is lowered. Now in terms of equilibrium, higher temperature shifts the equilibrium towards the left because the forward reaction is exothermic and the backward reaction is endothermic. So endothermic reaction is favored at higher temperature, whereas higher pressure shifts the equilibrium to the right because more molecules are on the left hand side and less molecules on the right hand side. So high pressure favors smaller volume. The use of catalyst has no effect on the equilibrium. Now, the other factors include higher temperature, for example, 450 degrees Celsius uses more energy, so it, you know there will be an increase in cost associated with it because high temperature is derived from fossil fuel. High pressure for example, like 200 atmospheric pressure uses more energy, so there is an increase in cost due to high pressure. And a pressure higher than 200 atmospheric, re you know, 200 atmospheric pressure requires even stronger reaction vessels, which increase the initial setup cost. The use of catalyst reduces the energy cost, so it is more efficient to use better catalyst. The temperature chosen is actually a compromise between the rate of reaction and the position of the equilibrium. The temperature chosen is a compromise between rate and cost, and the pressure chosen is a compromise between yield and rate and also cost. This question is about the reaction between sodium thiosulfate solution and hydrochloric acid. When hydrochloric acid is added to sodium thiosulfate solution, the mixture gradually becomes cloudy. Sodium thiosulfate reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce sodium chloride water, sulfur dioxide, and sulfur. Sulfur is produced in the reaction. Why does the mixture become cloudy? The sulfur produced is a solid and it is insoluble substance and thereby makes the solution cloudy. A student investigated the effect of changing concentration of sodium thiosulfate solution on the rate of the reaction. Figure 6 shows the apparatus used. We have a light source and a light sensor and a beaker and reaction mixture where the light passes through. The smaller the percentage of light from the light source reaches the light sensor as the mixture becomes more cloudy. Measure 50 cm cube of 0.1 mol per day sodium thiosulfate solution in, into the beaker. Add 10 cm cube of hydrochloric acid to the sodium thiosulfate solution. Immediately start a timer. Record the percentage of light from the light source that reaches the sensor every 20 seconds for 120 seconds. The student then repeats the steps from 1 to 4 using 0.2 mol per dm cube of thiosulfate solution. Figure 7 shows the result for 0.1 mol per dm cube thiosulfate solution. The percentage of light reaching the light sensor increased by 1% when 7 in 0.1 into 10 to the power. Into the power of minus 5 moles of sulfur is produced. Determine the rate of reaction in mole per second for the production of sulfur at 30 seconds. We should draw a tangent on figure 7. So we first of all look into the 30 seconds. Okay, we'll locate the 30 seconds and then draw a tangent. Then we are going to find out the value of the x step and the y step from the tangent. And then we will make a ratio for the value of the y step with the ratio of the value of the x step. Once we calculate the ratio, then it will the ratio will be the rate will be ratio type 7.1 into 10 to the power of minus 5. And the unit will be moles per second. Explain why the rate of reaction changes from 0 at 60 seconds. Answered in terms of concentration. The rate of reaction decreases because the concentration of the reactant decreases as time continues. The greatest rate of reaction will be at the beginning of the reaction, which is at the start. And because the greatest, you know, because at the beginning of the reaction, the greatest concentration of reactant is present. 
Figure 8 is a repeat of Figure 7. Figure 8 shows the results of 0.1 mole per TMQ sodium thiosulfate solution. Sodium thiosulfate solution was in excess in the investigation. The line of best fit on Figure 8 is horizontal between 80 and 120 because the reaction stopped. Why did the reaction stop? Because the hydrochloric acid is used up. If one of the reactant is used up, then it acts as a limiting reactant. Sketch a line of figure 8 to show the results you would predict from 0.2 mole per dmq sodium thiosulfate solution. In the case of sodium thiosulfate solution, we would see the reaction to be similar, but it would be much, much faster. But we're going to reach the same line though, but within a short period of time. The student did the investigation again the next day. The student found that the same method produced different results for the percentage of light reaching the light sensor. How could the student improve the method so that the same percentage of light reach the light sensor? Record the percentage of light every 10 seconds. Well, you know, recording it every 10 seconds doesn't give us any more advantage. Stop the light from other sources reaching the light sensor. Yes, this could be an advantage because if we were to improve the result and if light from other sources, for example, the room enters the sensor, then it will give us a raw BD. Use of larger volume of sodium thiosulfate, that doesn't change anything. Use a more sensitive light sensor. Sir, that doesn't also improve the experiment. The student improved the method so that the similar results were obtained on different ways and different days. What name is given to similar results obtained on different days under the same conditions by the same student? This particular process is called repeatable. The experiment was repeatable. Figure 9 shows the volumes of sodium thiosulfate solution concentration 0.1 mole per TMQ hydrochloric acid of concentration 0.05 mole per TMQ, which completely react to produce different masses of sulfur. Which expression represents the relationship between volume B? of sodium thiosulfate solution and the mass of M of sulfur produced. We can see as the volume of reactant is increased, the mass of sulfur produced in the gram also increased. So we can say that V is proportional to M. Determine the simplest whole number ratio of the volumes of sodium thiosulfate solution is to hydrochloric acid which completely react with each other. To do this, what we have to do is that we have to take a particular mass of, uh, for example, sulfur produced. So, for example, we choose the mass of sulfur produced to be 0.25. Then we will extend the line such that, that we can find out the volume of thiosulfate which in this case we can find out that this is 80 cm cube and then we are going to extend that same line and we will find out the volume of in this case hydrochloric acid and we are going to extend the light to find out the volume of hydrochloric acid which we find out to be 315 cm cube okay now we are going to do a ratio so at 0.25 gram sulfur we required uh, sodium thiosulfate is to so sodium thiosulfate solution we required 80 cm cube and hydrochloric acid we required 315 cm cube so when we will do the ratio so our ratio comes 1 is to 4 because we have to represent whole number ratio so guys this question has question up until only 8 in this particular question paper thank you for watching the video guys that's the end of this particular question paper see you in the next video guys bye bye